I love hearing my superior respond to a rose whisper to me about dead animals with, oh, that's normal. For every princess captured by a ferocious beast, there's gotta be a dashing knight, you know? Dashing knight? It happened to being a witch. I'm a woman of many talents. I'm telling you, I'm giving you permission to leave. Do you really think I'm just going to let you die? <laughs> and what's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? Nice girl? I don't think I've seen one today. Ooh. Yay. Yeah, yeah. Hey everyone, it's your boy Connor. Today we are playing As Lovely Corpses by Dee Marie on HIO. It's gay, it's mysterious, it might be horror? I'm not sure. Let's check it out. This game contains themes of animal death, body horror, blood, homophobia, self-harm, suicide, self-hatred and violence. Yay. The monster knows you're here. It will do its best to make you leave. As such, the game will occasionally do startling and unexpected things. Okay, it's actually horrifying. I have no idea what's happening. Are you prepared? No, actually not. But we can do it. Yeah. As far as anyone could tell, the Flores family had not committed any mortal sin. No fairy complained of improper etiquette. No witch reported anything missing from the garden. No one had been insulted, injured, or otherwise aggrieved. But it didn't stop a monster from showing up for the daughter one day. It was quiet, painless, and swift. The monster left nothing but a mark on the girl, the promise to hang over her head. I will return for you one day, little miss. I will not take your life, nor will I harm your body. But I will psychologically torture you. But I will never leave you. Oh, dang. I got it just in time, it's really starting to come down hard. As I do my best to outrun the splatter of raindrops on the pavement, the familiar shock of pink walls merges from behind the treetops. It feels a bit like being greeted by a friend. The florist house is an old money house. I mean, it's clearly a money house at least. Anyone can puzzle out that a place this size has to come with some serious price tag. It's really classy too, with a porch and pillars and everything. Victorian, I think. Gothic revival? Look, I'm a witch, not a real estate agent. My point is, it's a really nice house. Even with all the creepy death vines and the monster in the attic. Hmm. Well, let's clock it. Knock, knock, knock. The Flowers family always has at least two housekeepers employed, but they've got a bad record vis-a-vis -vis keeping them around for long. As such, it's not a surprise to see an unfamiliar face opening the door. Oh, thank God. You're the Rosa girl, right? The assistant? Um, they told me about you. Where's the witch? Well, you're looking at her. The witch that I work with? She's my grandma. And she's preoccupied with other business today. So, this is my first solo job. Hmm. The housekeeper's eye casually twitches. Oh, that's a good sign. You're a witch. How old are you? 18? 19? Is that a problem? No, not at all. It's completely fine. Why on earth should I be worried? Just because I woke up to a real-life horror movie this morning. Just because half the house has been taken over by those horrible things. Just because I've been working in this house for a week and out of nowhere a little monster appeared and abducted my employer's daughter and God knows what's happening to her. And God knows what will happen to me. But no! It's fine! I love that expression. Why not send a child to help us? A child on her first solo job. Sure, why not? Wouldn't want to break the streak we've got going on today. After all, I just love suddenly being shunted to nightmare worlds where logic is gone and murderous vines have replaced it. I love hearing my superior respond to a rose whisper to me about dead animals with, oh, that's normal. I love terror. I love being in hell. Can't wait for Satan to jump up my ass and tap dance. I swear to whatever God might still be up there if one more thing happens under this roof. I'm going to... Betty? Andrea puts a hand on a woman's shoulder and within an instant she's quiet and pale. Take a deep breath. Oh, a monster. A literal monster. I thought everyone was being sarcastic. I know, Hon. Why don't you go sit down for a little while? This was supposed to be extra money for the boat. Betty staggers like a fawn over to a nearby chair. After a moment she drops into it bonelessly. I hear a faint noise like... Boat. Drift down the hall. Hey, sorry about, um... 
All that. Hey, hey, don't sweat it. I love being casually insulted to my face. I love when people don't take me serious because of my age. It's super great. Be nice, she's a newbie. Though all the talk about the Flores monster was just a joke, huh? Okay, still gotta figure out why her name keeps changing. Alejandra and Alex, different people. She's not the first. Andrea is the one housekeeper who stuck around the Flores family the longest. So all of this is old hat to her. She's probably more annoyed by Patty's theatrics than the monster kidnapping her ward. And she's also too soft-hearted to tell the other woman to get a grip. I guess in a way we're co-workers, but more than anything we're friends. So, how have you been? Oh, you know, same as usual. Exhausted. Aren't we all? So what? We're looking at a typical case? Vines have taken over the attic and second floor completely. The most affected areas were all the usual ones. Office, bathroom, reading room, bedroom too. The Mr. and Mrs. Gone since Monday. They're on a trip to South Padre. We haven't um, actually told them yet. And Marisol and you know who? They're in the usual place? Yeah. Righto! Well, if that's everything, I think I'll get to work. No point in putting it off any longer. You're sure you'll be okay on your own? Hmm. Andrea, remember what I said literally two minutes ago about people not taking me seriously. Alex, it's not about your age. It'll be your first time doing this alone. And you know how those roses can get. You know how... You know how the monster can get. Mm. It's... yeah, it's a little nerve-wracking. But Marisa is my friend. And who's going to help her if it's not me? I mean, there are other witches in the area. No, I want to do this. For every princess captured by a ferocious beast, there's gotta be a dashing knight, you know? Hmm... Dashing knight? It happened to being a witch. I'm a woman of many talents. Ah! It... it under the door! Follow her pointer finger to the far end of the hall. The door that leads to the staircase. This hallway is the unofficial safe zone of the house. The roses never come in here. At least, me and Lela have always arrived before they started invading. Now, it slinks and twitches its way across the floor. The petals begin to fan out. Do something! Stay back. With a quick flap of latches, I open my briefcase. Lela us comfortably in the palm of my hand. Alright, let's... And abruptly... It's face to face with me. Yeah. And the rose, as roses tend to do, opens its mouth. Yeah, this is normal. Another day, another corpse waiting to happen. You've come here so many times, swaggering in the face of death. Should one applaud your bravado or your brainlessness? Ugh. For your information. But now, you walk in here alone. The girl turned a young lady before all our eyes. Surely you know, you'll only get harder from here on out. This is your warning. You should leave this place and never look back. No, I mean, I'm not leaving until I help Marisol. And not until I get rid of you. Hmm. What? This is it? You don't want to do more of this? I thought you loved your formula. Why do you suddenly want to skip all the foreplay? Marisol. Alex. Of course. What? Why is she talking through the rose? Did it eat her? N no, it's, it's letting her talk. It, it does this all the time. Marisa, listen. Just hang tight. I'm gonna be heading up pretty soon. Alejandra, listen to me. Do not come up here. Tell Andrea that she and the other one are fired. I want you all to get out of this house. Right now. And never come back. Mari, I know why it's making you say this, but... It's not making me say anything, Alex. I'm telling you of my own free will to go. Marisol, you... you know I have to... No, you don't. I'm telling you. I'm giving you permission to leave. Do you really think I'm just going to let you die? The hall is silent. Marisol, you know what will happen if it stays too long. Leaving you like this is just as good as killing you. The paddles of the rose gently retract and expand. It almost looks like a beating heart. Fine by me. Snick. It takes barely a flick of my wrist to drop the tendril on the floor. The rose's teeth are still now, hidden under its petal. I lift it up gently and place it in my briefcase. The rest of the vine is already dissolving into ash. The door opens without resistance. In the living room, the kitchen, I can see a couple of wayward vines started to creep in, but none with roses. They dissolve on their own once the monster leaves. I have bigger problems to worry about upstairs. Holler if you need anything. For God's sake, be careful. The stairs creak familiarly under my feet. You should have listened to her. The voice is familiar too. It never stops being unnerving. 
hearing it come out of multiple throats. What is it about you and the word no, little witch? You realize you don't have your grandmother's shadow to hide in anymore, do you? That was probably the one kindness that girl has ever given you, and you threw it away. You think that's the only time Marisol has been nice to me? <laughs> For a guy who's been bugging a girl her entire life, you don't know a goddamn thing about her. His voice goes silent a moment. You probably think that sassing it would be just asking for trouble, but believe it or not, it helps. There won't be anything standing between us when you come to the attic. My thorns will open your pretty skin and leave you nothing but a heap of twitching flesh. You'll feel the agony of a thousand deaths before you even die. Cool! Hey, hold still. I clip roses as I ascend the staircase, catching each one and depositing them into my briefcase. But the last one makes me pause at the top of the staircase. What's this you've got in your teeth? It's a page of a notebook paper, wrinkled and crisp from age and numerous folding. It's familiar. Pink, affection. Dark pink, gratitude. Blue, an impossible dream. Yellow, friendship, jealousy. Too many is dangerous. Red, passion. Anger, black, death. Lavender, love at first sight. White? Danger. Never listen. Oh my god, am I gonna have to remember this? Oh jeez, where'd you find this? My nervous handwriting, a ghost of a hand scribbling, and a frantic attempt to keep up with my grandmother's instructions. My frankly embarrassing attempt at spelling lavender. When I was 13, I thought confronting Marisol's monster would be my greatest accomplishment as a witch. I wasn't actually sure we'd make it back alive, despite Lila's constant reassurance. I wonder what my younger self would think of me now, having climbed these stairs more times than I can count. My greatest accomplishment, now a regular home visit. You don't have that woman with you anymore. It wouldn't be sporting if I didn't allow you extra help. Awesome, but thanks. I snipped the rose with a little more force than necessary. So, the attic, huh? The attic has a pull-down staircase. It's currently covered with vines, but... Those are actually the least of my worries right now. They are just locks, for you to be precise, and they all look pretty secure. Hey, Bucko, where are the keys? Doesn't reply. In six years of doing this, it has never once given us the keys when we ask. Somehow, it's just become routine, and routine has historically been pretty comforting. But the routine typically follows with the monster explaining where the keys are. A grandiose villain speech. As if we haven't heard it a thousand times. Today it's silent. Not even an evil chuckle. You're different today. For a monster, you're seriously losing your bite. It says nothing. Leila always said that if there's one thing monsters love, it's their formula. <laughs> That's why you always come back and hide in the attic with Marisol. And why we always go through the same lines. We actually think the monster is Marisol, but we're gonna see. Dastardly fiend, let that poor girl go. Aha, as if I would. You witches are so pathetic. I'll toy with you some more. Let's play a little game if you can find the three keys hidden somewhere on this floor. Something, something, time limit, clues, whatever. But now all of a sudden you're too bored to go through it. Honestly, what's the point of going to save a beautiful princess if we don't get to be a little dramatic about it? You can't save her. Hmm. Fine, whatever. I need to clean up the roses in the other rooms anyway. I'll play a doofy little game, like always. Do some gardening, like always, and I'll be back with the keys before you can say Citizen Kane. Which? The voice comes from behind the attic door. I'll warn you one more time. This is your final chance to turn back. I shrug and start towards the reading room. I follow the vines and the scent of roses. It's a nice smell that has a tendency to become cloying the more time passes. Lala used to get headaches sometimes, but weirdly enough, I seem to be able to endure it better than her. My first stop is the reading room. Andrea had said it was one of the most affected places. And sure enough, I see quite a bit of roses. Let's see, the roses first, then we'll get to looking for the keys. It'd be nice to have a reading room, I think. Now is the... It'd be nice to have a reading room, I think. I always kind of envied Marisol for it. Even though I usually only ever see it when I'm being choked by vines. I gently run my finger down one as I look around the room. It's warm to the touch. Alright, who's up first? There's a tall bookcase packed to the brim with books of all kinds. From the topmost shelf sprouts a single rose. We'll listen first. A pigeon crushed paper fin on the road. Wings somehow spare. 
still spread, straining slack their tendons. They reach for the sun, the papa book from hell. Looking at Rodkill was like getting a fish hook pushed into my heart. Silent in away, I can't put into words. Snap, 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 I cut it loose. On the shelf right below it, the books are slightly askew, as if one of their number is missing. From the gap sprouts a single lavender rose. And Lavender Rose was something with love. Well, listen first. The witch had come to battle me many times before. This was the first time she brought a partner. A girl with a fluffy hat and a permanent smile. No older than my ward. She was frightened to see my face. I could tell that much from her tiny fingers clutching her notebook tight. But even as her grin went tight with Bell's bravado, I could see the pride in her face watching her grandmother get to work. And as I retreated, I threw one last glance over my shoulder. My name is Alex. I am here to save you. I memorized her face and name, knowing she would one day become my enemy too. I outlined her features in my mind with animosity. And yet, somehow, it also felt like fondness. Snip, 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 I cut it loose. Okay, so the monster's in love with me. There's a comfortable armchair begging someone to curl up in it. From the seat sprouts a single yellow rose. Yellow rose was friendship and jealousy and too much is bad, but I guess one is fine. She loved reading. She still loves reading. The beautiful words, the beautiful worlds. It would make her forget, for just a little while, the curse that hung over her head like a sword. You read so much, said the little witch. Why don't you tell me about the stuff you read? She shook her head, her clumsy tongue faltering, failing, tripping over syllables and second thoughts. It would be a mockery to the lovingly crafted books. Well then, how am I supposed to know why you like them so much? Because they make me forget how much I can't do. They make me forget the person I am in this world. That's so silly, the little witch doubled over in laughter. You can do anything as long as you work hard and believe in yourself. It's hard for me too, but I just had to give it a try. I'm sure you could go to school and be happy and be normal if you just tried a little harder. Oh fuck. Because it's that easy. Hmm. Because she had never, ever, once thought of that before. Because it's so easy for you. I can do it too. Even though you're so much better than me and everyone except you can see it. In that moment she wished she had never met the little witch. Yeah, Alex, what the fuck? Hmm. Snip snip, I cut it loose. There's a stack of books on the floor by the armchair's feet. They seem to be from a series about animals aimed towards younger readers. From the topmost one sprouts a single blue rose. And I forgot what blue was, but I think it was negative. So I'm gonna say no. I snip and snip, 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 and slowly the vines begin to dissolve. Some begin to creep away, retreating towards the attic door. And eventually the room is free of roses. Oof, okay, I guess that was everything. But I wonder where any of those keys in here. As I scan the room with my eyes, I notice a couple of books left lying on the side table. A dictionary and a bird watcher's field guide. A book of words and a book of books. I feel like the universe is telling me something important. Should I look at one of those books? I'll leave through the pages and... My vocabulary feels so expanded, but seriously. I should focus on finding that key. Should I look at one of those books? Okay, I can look at both, sure. Is there any bird I should log up? Um, give me a robin. It's my favorite bird. Birds. I think I'm forgetting something important about birds. Oh yeah, it's a picture of Crow with a tiny top hat last night. I have to remember to save it to my animals wearing people clothes file when I get home. Anyways, where's that key? Okay, then show me the crow that you saw with the tiny top hat. Am I actually stuck here until I... I leave through the pages again. Lallygag, Lamb, Lamina, Lark. Okay, Lark. Magic, Magma, Magnet, Magpie, Mallard, Mix, Oak, Ferk, Oak, Forest, Oaxaca, Cheese, Queso Blanco, Queso Fresco, Queso Oaxaca. I actually don't know how to pronounce Spanish things, I'm sorry. Si, Oaxaca, Cheese. God, I'd like to see some cheese. No, focus, focus. I was pretty sure there would be a key in this room. This is something I haven't tried yet. Magpie. I feel a lump of metal before I see it. A familiar bronze key is taped to the page, right on top of the entry for Magpie. I did it. One out of three keys found. It feels like the very air of the house shudders. Out of the corner of my eye, I 
I think I see some vines undulating, but nothing happens. Getting a better look of a cluster of vines by the wall, I notice that a lot of them are feeding into the door right off the reading room. Mr. Flores' office. There was another room Andrea mentioned, right? I don't really remember what Mr. Flores does. He's a specific doctor of some sort. He has a title with a long, complicated name. There are no syringes or anything in his office, though. It's mostly papers and files. It must be a complicated job. There's some paintings on the wall, but they're mostly covered in vines right now. Within a smaller space, the smell of roses is growing overpowering. Hmm, I gotta get going. There are three paintings on the wall. In the white space, between two of them, sprouts a pink rose. Pink was something good. I returned to her on a grey December afternoon, and the air was cold and biting. I enjoy the winter, the days of cloud gilded skies and no sun. Time was passing, and her skin grew colder and colder. Would today be the day? But then, all of a sudden, the room was warm. I told you we'd be back. She didn't know what to say after I was banished. But the little witch took her hand. She led her downstairs, and her grandmother fixed them a drink. Thick and creamy, layered with cinnamon, horchata, and it warmed her stomach. The little witch asked her about the things she liked. She listened to her like she was the most fascinating person in the world. She told her about school and monsters and learning to be a witch. And it warmed her chest. Somewhere in another room, her parents and the little witch's grandmother were talking in low, solemn voices. But at that moment, the world was just her kitchen. The kitchen and the little witch and their warm drink and the pale white sky outside. Snip, 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 I cut it loose. There's a desk covered in scattered papers. A small book sits on the desk. From the cover sprouts a single red rose. Red is passion, but also anger, so I'm gonna say no. Snip, 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 I cut it loose. I kinda wanna listen to all of the roses, but... Uh, probably get me a bad ending. On the desk sits a computer. On the keyboard sprouts a single blue rose. Snip, 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 I cut it loose. There's a tall file cabinet. From the handle of the top drawer sprouts a single yellow rose. Snip, snip, snip. The vines curl into ash, the roses retreat. Two rooms down! Good job, me. Now let's see if there's any keys in here. There's a number of places it could be in here, but... For some reason, I feel like looking at the paintings. I also remember a suspicious book being on Mr. Flores' desk. Which should I look at now? Paintings? Mr. Flores has three paintings in his office. There's a painting of a woman lying in a river. A painting of a wheat field. And a portrait he commissioned of Marisol. Marisol looks fucking angry. Which one should I look at? She looks pissed. It's a pottery commissioned for Marisol's 18th birthday. It's kind of a weird style compared to the other paintings, but at the least, the artist captured Marisol's hair. Her eyes. Rather, her eye stares directly out at the viewer. I always did think her gaze was intense. Is there something off about this painting? Her shirt? Her hair? Her eye? I think my actions. Um, I have no idea. As much as I like looking at Marisol, I might be getting off track. Okay, wait, I'm gonna look at the book first. Well, the key was in a book last time. Maybe that's the theme for today? I'll look closer at the book. It says, um, what to do when your child breaks your heart. Looks like it's dog-eared. No, family drama. Hmm, let's look somewhere else. Girl in the River. It's an older painting. The girl is surrounded by flowers and her palms float to the surface in little cups. It seems dreamlike and peaceful, but it makes me feel uneasy for some reason. Oh, well, she's probably dead. Is there something off about this painting? I don't know. I think my actions. Field. It's a vast yellow field under a dark blue sky. A murder of crows flies overhead. The texture of the paint is interesting. It makes it feel like it's moving before my eyes. But somehow it feels ominous. Is there something off about this painting? Do you think my actions? On second thought, I think I'd like to look at something that isn't deeply upsetting on a weird primal level. How am I supposed to know what is wrong? I'm gonna say something about Marisol. Her hair. Yeah, I really like how it looks in this painting. It's so long and flowy. And the artist really got it across how it looks different than different lights. Peach and blonde and almost kind of pink. Friends of red if you look real close. Or if she leans over you and some of her hair falls on your shoulder. 
And like, she's always leaning over me, because <laughs> she's so tall. Uh, anyways, it looks fine in this picture. I mean, obviously it's more than... it's gorgeous, it's... It looks fine. Her eye? It's an eye and, yep, just an ordinary old eye. Mm. Wait, her eyes, they're straight at a viewer. Or at the wall opposite the painting. Hey, there's something on the wall opposite the painting. Ah, two out of three keys found. How did you not see that? <laughs> oh man, I can't believe I overlooked that. It would have been so embarrassing if I missed that one. The bathroom was pitch black when I arrived. Vines are leading into it, but they don't smell roses. It smells something like neat. Mm. I turn on the light. Ah, oh, oh. Marisol, are you are you okay? Probably not. Well, gang, I must say I'm not a fan of anything that's happening in this room. But in the bathroom's always the worst drawer, am I? What? Do roses not have a sense of humor? Oh, we have great senses of humor. You just aren't very funny. Oh. Okay, great, awesome. Let's just get to it. From the head of the corpse sprouts a single red rose. Room the rose? Uh, I don't know. There's a slip, I cut it loose. The toilet seat is covered by a patchwork of vines. In the middle of the bramble sprouts a single yellow rose. Ruin the rose. Snip, 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 I cut it loose. On the top of the toilet tank sits a razor. On the razor sprouts a single black rose. Yeah, that's... that isn't good. Um, ruin, ruin the rose, cut the rose. The mirror's cracked. In the center of the crack sprouts a single dark pink rose. Listen first. One day before I left, I waited at the window. I saw the little witch pat her trembling shoulder. It's okay now. The little witch smoothed the hair out of her face, and for a moment, she left her fingers between the yellow locks. It's really pretty. She lifted her head. Huh? Your hair's so pretty. It's like gold. It's like you've got supermodel hair, you know? She stared at the little witch. She, who had spent so much time looking into mirrors, she with ghostly patchwork scars between her legs. She stared at the little witch. Hey, why are you crying? Huh? Even though I took care of the roses, the vines are still strewn around the room. Hmm. God. Fine, okay. I know where the frickin' key is. Yeah, probably. Hmm. Ew. It's not a corpse. It's hamburger meat, obviously. A wig, a shirt, a pig of creativity and posing. The monster's done this bit a million times, and it stopped scaring me years ago. Mm. Well, good thing I brought gloves. Ah, sure you love being a witch gang. I know you're all in my briefcase now, but I suddenly feel like talking really loudly, totally unrelated to any meat sounds that might now be happening. Mm. I hand close around something, but this doesn't feel like a key at all. This is... Based on Marisol's descriptions of her more irritable episodes, I'm now almost positive her previous diagnosis was inaccurate. Or, at the least, only partially correct. Combined episodes of depression and hypomania most likely point specifically to bipolar 2 disorder. Proper treatment for patients with bipolar 2 is of the utmost importance. Furthermore, bipolar disorder is a condition that can heavily exacerbate ocular rosacea. Besides restarting regular therapy sessions, getting a prescription of mood stabilizers as soon as uh, will be vital. I'm going to recommend um, colleagues of... Um, um, Son of a gun. I actually managed to do something unexpected after all these years. The vines creak as they retract from the bathroom. It somehow sounds more like laughter than anything. The key is in here. There's only one more room it could be in. Hmm. God, I hope nobody's expecting me to clean this up. Her room is a bit smaller than what you might expect and surprisingly plain at first glance. A desk, a bed, a closet, two small bookshelves. The windows are cracked open letting in a faint melody of raindrops and the scent of warm earth. It mingles nicely with the smell of roses. Mm. Marisol's bookshelf is packed tight with books. From the highest shelf sprouts a single black rose. Boom, the rose. I cut the rose. Her closet door is slightly ajar. From the doorknob sprouts a single white rose. And I remember that white is the color we should definitely never pick. But I guess we're missing a lot of the story if we don't pick all the roses, but uh, it's too late now. White roses are emblems of purity. That's why they're so dangerous. Lila told me once that humans have no completely pure emotions. They're strange and jumbled creatures whose feelings are always shifting, being mixed and muddled with other feelings. That's why we sometimes say terrible things in a moment of anger. In that instant, 
your heart is tricked into thinking the anger is all that's ever been. But even if you hurt someone with your words, you always have the chance to apologize. You can explain yourself and do your best to fix the damage. But a white rose. A white rose takes your words and makes them pure. It pulls out all your tangled feelings and reasons and warps your statement into a truly pure, untainted emotion. It makes your words turn to blades, strike straight to the heart. It turns them into words that can never, ever be taken back. A statement of pure despair, a statement of true anger, a statement of true hatred. Many people have taken their lives after listening to the words of a white rose. Hmm. I take the flower and gently place it in my briefcase. There's a dip in the mattress, big enough for a body, so warm. In the center is a pink rose. Listen first. You're being all quiet. Is something wrong? No, you saw. What? Do I have something on my face? Besides my hair, I mean. Why did you come today? Well, you said you wanted to go to the movies today, right? But that was before yesterday when you... What? Because of the monster? Marisol, it's gonna take more than that to... Alex, I yelled at you. I called your grandmother a... Mari, you kept your mouth in a placid smile, but your gaze was firm. Marisol, listen, it's okay. You were stressed yesterday, and you said some things you didn't mean. It happens to the best of us, not to you. Leila already forgave you. Look, honestly, I think she thought it was kind of funny. So it's all okay, okay? You don't have to beat yourself over it. <sighs> I think it's getting worse. The monster? No, I'm... It's making me worse. Like, angrier? Meaner? I don't know. Hmm. I'm getting scared of myself. Alex, are... Oh my gosh, Marisol. Are you really going to ask if I'm scared of you? Marisol. Marisol. I am literally a witch. Witch in training. Whatever. My point is, if anything, you should be scared of me. You know, these rumors about me and my grandma around town, right? I think we sacrifice cats to the devil and use bone magic. What the hell is bone magic? I wish any of my magic was half as metal as that sounded. I laughed. So you're saying I should listen to rumors? Absolutely. I'm super creepy and weary according to them. I managed to laugh again. At the first thing from creepy. You're so cool and brave. Oh my god, like, you aren't brave? Of all that you go through? That's not bravery. Not a moment of that was bravery. Nope, sorry, I'm declaring it a fact right now. No, oh, come on. Attention world, Marisol Flores is officially super brave. It is approximately good trait number a billion of her many good traits. Oh my god, literally, what good traits? Wait, no. Oh my god, don't answer that. Marisol Flores is A. Super brave, B. Super smart, C. A great listener. Lord D. Says really interesting things, E. Smells like flowers, F. Okay, okay, my god, let's go to the freaking movies. <laughs> Honestly, hanging out with me like this, you must have a death wish. Yep, a very cute death wish. Snip, 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 I cut the rose. On her dresser sits a brightly colored box, tied with a cherry ribbon. From the ribbon sprouts a single red rose. Ruin the rose. Distantly, I'm aware of the vines making noises of the tree. They're attracting out of the room. The box has a label on it. Just one word. Alejandra. It's a book. It's a long title that I've never heard before, but I love it already. And there's a card. You really shouldn't be reading this right now. Well, in any case, congratulations, Alex. I know you've been waiting to become a witch your entire life. For what it's worth, I've always considered you the best witch in the world. I'm sorry I couldn't give this to you the day you became official. I'm sorry I do so many things worth apologizing for. Alex, thank you so much for being my friend all these years. I really can't thank you enough. I really appreciate your friendship. I really love you. Alex, if I haven't told you already, I want you to leave. If you're reading this, you're probably getting ready to come to the attic. Please don't. Please just take this gift and walk out of this house. Don't worry about me. Just focus on being a witch like you've always wanted. Alejandra, I ask so much of you, but I promise this will be the last thing. Knowing you, you think you're obligated to come rescue me. Very sweet. But you know you can't save me. Please, Alex. <laughs> Go live your life and forget about me. Open the book. I flip the front cover. The book opened. Something small, silver, is lying on the front page. 
Three out of three keys found. I mean, I should probably go because from everything, my guess is that she's dead in the attic because she killed herself. I start walking towards the attic. No! Okay, yeah. Oh, I just wanted to look at the book. I thought maybe I could still leave, but of course I can't leave. And now things are horrible and bad and... Let's see what will happen. I sprint towards the attic. It takes moments to work the door open and I go up the stairs. She's taking so long. Can we really be sure she's okay up there? She'll be fine. Trust me. She's the only person at this house who knows what she's doing. But what about Marisol? How can we be sure that thing hasn't hurt her? Hmm. I can't believe this happens regularly. How has she been able to survive this long with a monster constantly trying to... Daddy. What? What? Why are you making that face? <sighs> you do know there is no monster, right? Yeah, it's just her. Huh? The attic, as always, is surprisingly clean. Aside from the mass of vines creeping across the walls, it would basically be called spotless. Her bed is by the window, as always. Only her head moves to me. Oh god, she's still alive. Okay, that's good. That's good. I thought she was dead. You really suck at following directions, Alex. <laughs> good to see you, too. I was hoping this time you might not come. I don't really know why I expected today to be any different. Well, we've got ourselves a nice little pattern going on, don't we? More like a rat. The same games, the same goofy lines. Hey, I'm pretty sparse with the goofy lines today. <laughs> good for you. Something about saving a princess, something about being a brave knight, etc. <laughs> and what's a nice girl like you doing in a place like this? Nice girl? I don't think I've seen one today. So, how are you? Dying? Huh. <laughs> right. Let's get to it. So, the bathroom. I thought we were kind of past the fake body in the bathtub thing. <laughs> hey, don't ask me, the monster did that. Uh -huh. Seemed nostalgic, since... Now you're the real deal and everything. Sort of. Haha, <laughs> remember this thing? Well, I can share if you're a 90s kid. 15 magic spells only 90s kids appreciate. 25 roses you pruned if you were a 90s kid. Only 90s kids remember the sheer terror of seemingly finding their best friend's corpse. Hey, complain to the monster if you don't like it. Hmm. Alex? It's a joke. I didn't mean... I think we both know it's bullshit, Mari. But all day you've been trying to push me away, and now you're going to act like that was all just some big goof. Well, obviously you aren't listening to me. If you were just going to pretend that everything was A-OK, -okay, I didn't see a point in trying to... Sorry, you think I'm pretending everything is A-OK? -okay? Well, yeah. I don't know if you noticed, Alex, but it's kind of your thing. Hmm. But fine, let's talk. Why did you keep telling me to leave? You only ever used to do that while doing the whole monster act. You never used your real voice. Why are you suddenly... Marisol, I'm the last person in the world who have to explain your own condition to you. If I didn't come up to do this, you would have died. Is that what you wanted? I mean, have you been listening to me the past six years? Alex, you've been the closest friend I've ever had. You know basically everything about me. You know I'm not getting any better. But you're not getting any worse. <laughs> Am I really? Every time I wake up, it feels harder to get out of bed. I feel less and less. I feel like I can't remember what kind of things I used to like. I feel like I can't remember the last time I was happy. But do you know what the worst part is? I don't have a single reason to feel this way. I have a good life and a nice family. Nothing terrible ever happened to me. But out of nowhere... God, I can't even remember when it started. It just feels like one day my heart stopped beating. One day I woke up and I was a corpse. But Alex, I'm so tired. And I don't even know why. It all just feels so empty. I'm so empty, except for the vines on the road. You know, at night, sometimes when it's really, really quiet, I think I can hear it growing. Sometimes I just hear it making noises. And I'm pretty sure it's laughing. Most of the time, I feel like I'm just pretending to be a human being. But maybe I really am a monster. A monster? A corpse? And a princess. You're building up quite the resume. Anyways, that takes care of everything. No more vines, no more roses. Uh, are you sure? I think you missed a pretty big one. Uh, the joke stopped being funny years ago, you know. <laughs> Who's choking? I'm not going to kill you, Marisol. Hmm, then maybe I'll kill you. Oh? Yeah, tell you what. If you don't pluck the rose out of my eye, I'll take the vines and crush your throat like a soda can. Come on, don't make it sound so appealing. What? Alex, don't. 
Don't talk like that. What? You were the one talking about strangling me. Yeah, as a... It was a joke. Yeah, obviously. I thought we were doing a bit. No, we're not. I'm not... God. Why do you always go along with everything? I shouldn't be making jokes like this. You shouldn't just be okay with me making jokes like this. It's terrible. I am terrible. You're not terrible, Mari. You're having a bad day. I have been there. I know what it's like. You know what it's like? You know what it's like? I... God. Alejandra. What the fuck do you know about having a bad day? You're perfect! Marisol, come on. You're so, so perfect and beautiful and witty and talented and... And you're a witch. You've barely just become a witch. You're amazing and you have no idea what it's like being... Being this. Being a burden. Being this ugly, horrible thing. I'm barely even human. I'm a shitty little heap of failures in the shape of a person. If I'm not feeling utterly miserable or feeling sorry for myself. I'm this horrible, irrational bitch, making life a living hell for everyone around me. I know what people say about me. I know what they think when they see me. I know my parents hate having to deal with me. I don't even blame them. I hate living like this. I hate myself. And you, just sit there and won't even let me end this. But you think you know what it's like? Mari. No, shut up! I'm so sick of this. And if you're not going to do this for me, mm. if you won't do it for me, at least just look the other way. Marisol, look at me. Just stop, okay? Stop acting like you have any idea what I'm going through. What is happening? That's your... Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, in retrospect, I... I always found it kind of funny that you never asked why I always cover my other eye. I thought you were trying to be cool. Huh. <laughs> it's real? It's real. 100% genuine ocularization. Christ alive. We've known each other for years and I never, I never even... Well, I tried to keep it under wraps. That's kind of the mentally ill um, life experience. All your friends are just also mentally ill and you find out years later and you just flock together, I guess. Because mentally ill people, let's go. But you can't be. You're so... normal. Yep, we all know the funniest people who seem perfect are actually fucking depressed. So check in on your friends. <laughs> Am I? Mari, you were probably too busy ragging on yourself to notice. I'm not exactly miss well-adjusted myself. But you are! You're normal and happy, you tell jokes! Um, yeah, as a deflection. You think it's normal to be like, Haha, I'm so tired of everything and I want to ultra die. Why do you think I always crack jokes when things go so? It's the only way I know how to handle it. <laughs> I guess when I say it like that, it makes sense that you'd think I always pretend everything's okay. Especially when I was too much of a coward to show you my rose. Sorry. <laughs> Marisa, you're right about one thing. I don't know what it's like to be you. You've got a lot going on. I don't have mood swings like you, and my vines are nearly as bad as yours. But everything you are saying right now, about feeling like a burden, about feeling like you couldn't remember what it's like being happy, feeling like you woke up dead one day, it's like you looked into my head and pulled it all out. A girl like you shouldn't want to die, and a girl like you shouldn't feel like you're committing a crime just to exist. But here we are. Here's the thing, Marisol. You can swear up and down that you want to die, and that you've been asking for me to kill you since the day we met. But it doesn't change the fact that you've always, always left me a way to find you. Do you ever... Do you ever feel like me? Like there's no hope? Or you have no reason to look forward to waking up? Yeah. Then how do you... I find reasons. No matter how silly or small. You can be looking forward to mastering a new spell, or drinking our chatter, or... Uh, Marisol, would you ever consider being a witch? What? But I'm not... The only thing magical about me is... What? You don't think that counts? Lots of notable witches have had ocular rosache. Lola told me about them. I think she probably never brought it up with you because... It's tough for someone who's not in a family like us to become official. But I mean, your family isn't anything to sneeze at either. What I'm saying is, trying to become a witch isn't exactly a shabby reason to stay alive. In case you haven't noticed, witches are rad. I could do worse things with my time. Especially if it's kept you around this long. You know, the worst I ever was was when I was 13. 
Oh, otherwise. That's the first time I remember thinking without a shred of a doubt. I want to die. You know what helped? My grandmother told me she knew about another person with my condition. A pretty girl my age. And she offered to introduce me to her. <laughs> the day that I knew that I wasn't the only person in the world with OR. <laughs> I can't even describe it. But you feel like you're utterly completely alone and then find someone like you. Someone like you who's pretty and smart and has this way of talking about things she loves. It just makes your blood feel electric. Someone who tells you about something she saw and makes you feel like you were there. Someone who makes you look at the world in a new way. Marisol. Becoming a certified witch was my long-term goal. But it definitely was not the only thing that kept me around this long. Uh, but <laughs> let's take this one step at a time. I think becoming a witch would be really good for you. And it might even be a good way to direct excess negative energy from your flower. But it wouldn't be an instant solution to everything. I just want you to understand that. You won't be replaced with perfect magic you. You won't stop having bad days. Yeah, I figured. You'll have to fight through them. And of course, I'll be here to help you. So, can I ask you to do the same for me? I mean, you've always been that person for me, but it's just... Uh, always seem responsible to consider you that way without... Alex. <laughs> uh, words. I'm just trying to say, can, can you help me through the bad days too, if it's not... Alex, you honestly thought you'd have to ask? It's the least I can do with all you've done for me. Besides... Ooh. Yay. As lovely corpses, I've got to stick together, you know? They're so cute! Yeah, I know. So, I really have to go to get rid of these. I have to tell my grandma about what we talked about. Maybe she'll even agree to be your sponsor. And, um, call me, you know? If you ever just want to vent or anything. Alejandra? Hmm? You can't save me, you know? Even if I become a witch, even if things get better, I'm always going to have this rose. I'm always eventually going to have days like today. And I'm always going to come on days like today. You're going to get old walking up these stairs, you know. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait. Ah, so cute. I once read a book about birds. It was a chapter all about cuckoos. Book said about the gangsters of the animal kingdom. They look for magpies who have just recently laid eggs, take an egg out of the nest, and replace it with one of their own. The magpies are forced to take care of the cuckoo chick, which eats far more than the rest of the chicks combined. So much so that the other chicks simply starve to death. The book depicted the cuckoo chick as a grotesque monster, half of its body taken up by an eternally gaping mouth. Screaming, poor magpies. I hated that picture. I used to think cuckoo chicks were the most evil and despicable creatures on earth. But how was it a chick's fault? It never asked to be laid in a nest too small for it. It never asked to have a voice that cried louder and longer than its brethren. It was dropped into the world that never expected it to exist. But instead of trying to make the nest bigger, or giving its parents enough food for all the chicks. Everyone just blamed it for having a body that couldn't fit into a nest it never asked for. God. God. Why couldn't you have made me a magpie? I snip, 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 and slowly the vines begin to dissolve. The kitten's ribcage opened like a present on Ball Street. The head was perfectly intact and perfectly cute. Some Claude's prayers had turned everything from the neck down into a nightmare. Is it arrogant to think people look at me the same way? An adorable tragedy. Every time mom brings me somewhere, her friends smile at me like someone in the family just died. It's the most infuriating thing. I'd feel better if people were actually honest about how disgusting it was to look at me. Snip, 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 I cut it loose. Do you know what I see when I look at you? I see a recluse. I'm sorry. The only time you leave your room is when you go to school. And you certainly aren't making any friends there. I'm sorry. I know your condition is hard to deal with, but God. If you just could try. I am trying. Why won't you say anything? Do 
you hate me that much. I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. People are talking. They probably think we mistreat you. Why can't you ever think about how this affects us? I'm sorry. Marisol, God, don't cry. I'm only telling you this because we want to help you. We don't know how you're feeling. We only know what we see. And in my eyes, you're the loneliest person I've ever known. And in my eye, that's the best thing I could be. Snip, 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 I cut it loose. I used to like it when you told me about your studies. It was all so interesting. You always blushed, saying your magic wasn't as cool as the stuff I read about in books. But of course it was. Magic is magic. And your magic would only get more powerful when you got older. You were already so amazing. At the time, you've become an actual witch. And I understood. You have so much talent. You're so amazing. You're going to become a wonderful witch. I'm not even sure I'm going to be alive in a few years. Maybe the monster will catch me off guard in a year and kill me. Maybe next week. Maybe tomorrow. You have a future. I have a curse. If I was braver, I could have just told you I didn't want to hear about that stuff anymore. But I didn't. Bitterness was so much easier. I'm sorry, Alex. To support a friend is all I can be. I'm not even good at that. Snap, snap, snap. I liked going on walks with my parents. Those were some of the better times. In the summer, where we could see the yellow flicker of fireflies in the evenings. In the autumn, when the sky was pale and the air was cool. Those walks made me feel like I was a normal person. I don't want you to wear those shorts. What? They're so long. Of course, I knew that. I liked them because they were long. As far back as I can remember, I hated my big, thick thighs. It was such a relief when I saw that the gym shorts they gave us at school fell almost to my knee. You really shouldn't be wearing shorts like those. What does it matter that they're long? You're a young lady. Mom, what are you talking about? They make you look like a woman who likes other women. <laughs> oh. Okay. I walked back to my room and dug out the tiniest, most awkward pair of shorts I own. I hadn't worn them since last year. Every second, every minute that I walked, I felt my legs being squeezed like me. But at least I didn't look like a woman who likes other women. I only go on walks by myself now. Snip, 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 I cut it loose. You, with your soft, fluffy hair. You, with your cute little cartoon character eyes. You, with your long, slender legs and your curvy chest and your perfect, sleek little waist. You turned to me and said, Do I look fat in this? Alex, I love you. Sometimes I swear I could just smack you. That does it. I throw my shears down on the floor. If it's so damn awful being my friend, then I'll save you the fucking trouble. Betty and Andrea's questions blur into meaningless noise as I storm past them. I make sure to slam the door behind me as hard as I can. I start a long walk home and raindrops begin to pepper my head. I try ignoring the tears. I don't look back once. At 15 years old, I realize I hate shaving. My razor uses too many blades. Three blades for a smooth skin and a close cut. You throw in an extra blade free. Close cut. Two blades too close. It'd be so easy. Power. You say you want it. You have all you need. Coward. A pair of slashed wrists for the price of one. Small enough to fit in the palm of your hand. Special packaging for easier storage. Not even a coward. An attention whore. Hig. How dare you go out looking like that? Or dare you force them to look at you? Your legs, your arms, your stomach. Coward. Just looking at you makes me sick. Coward. Just looking at you makes me sick. Coward. Just looking at you makes me... You make me sick! You make me sick! You make me... I read it in the book. They checked the wrists. They won't check the inner thighs. 
Only half a coward now, for half the price. <laughs> hmm. I cut the rose. The baby won't stop crying. The baby won't stop crying. The baby won't stop crying. The sister only visits a few times a year, and you honestly can't spend a little more time out of your room. I'm sorry, I just want to get away from the noise a little. Why won't it stop crying? Why won't it shut up? For God's sake, Marisol, it's a baby. You don't think you weren't the same? It's literally not the point at all. How can you not see the point? Fine, I guess I can't do anything if you want to be selfish. Shut up, shut up, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone! Do you think that people have a responsibility to protect other people from themselves? Honestly, I think so. I can't fix myself. No one can. Not even Doña de Rosa. Not even Alex. Not even magic can help me. If I stay away from people as much as I can, I won't be able to hurt them. It's probably better this way. Alex, I'm sorry. The monster laughed above my head. At the rose. The white rose parts its lips. And in the silkiest, most honey-sweet voice I've ever heard, it sings. Sometimes I just hate you. The woman named Alejandra de Rosa is dropping her shears. The woman named Alejandra de Rosa is staggering in place, as if her legs cannot bear the weight of the words she has just heard. The woman named Alejandra de Rosa is running down the stairs. The woman named Alejandra de Rosa is barging out of the house. The woman named Alejandra de Rosa is running, cold chill of the rains like needles on her skin. The woman named Alejandra de Rosa is running. The woman named Alejandra de Rosa is running. The woman named Alejandra de Rosa is... God, I don't deserve to call myself your friend. Hey, your hands are so warm around mine. Shut up. I really, I really don't. It's just getting worse and now... My soul, it's literally not a big deal, it's okay. Why do you keep... I'm gonna jerk my hand out of yours. Why are you telling me it's okay? You're the one who... who... And I finally fall to my knees, sobbing. You drop with me, and I hate it. I hate being held with those arms. I hate when I'm not noble enough to push you away. I hate myself, I hate myself. I hate myself and you hold me anyways. Hey, that was the game! Ah, uh, nearly made me cry actually at the end. But I'm super happy that everyone got a happy end. We are ignoring the bad end that exists. It's so important to me to see stories about mentally ill people that can be happy. Like, things can still suck, but you can be happy, and that's nice. Like, I don't have bipolar, but my dad used to have it. And my brain also has something. So I totally get the struggle of everything feeling too much and feeling like you can never change and like you're doomed to just have a horrible life forever. But I know it doesn't have to be that way and you can't find happiness and even if you will never be normal, you can be happy. And that's really nice. So I hope that Marisol becomes a wonderful witch. And when you buy the game, you do actually get a PDF, which tells the story of Marisol and Alex one year later. And I haven't read it yet, I will read it probably. So if you're curious how our girls are doing a year later, check it out. Buy the game, support the creator. And like always, if you made it this far, please like, please like the video. Subscribe if you want to see more. Tell me what other games you want me to play. Or just tell me in general what games you like or what you liked about this game. So, until then, bye!